Hey everyone, so quick video here today, as I am clearly not in the studio. I'm actually in a hotel room in Las Vegas for the NAB convention. And I wasn't even planning on making a video today, but I woke up this morning and Adobe dropped a bombshell. Uh, so yeah, you can file this one under, I'm not even supposed to be here today. And yes, that is a clerk's reference. So let's dive in and take a look at what Adobe just dropped. So Adobe just launched a look at their upcoming Firefly video model. This is something that we saw a little bit of during last year's Adobe Max sneaks. One of the audible audience gasp moments in Max was when they showcased the video in-painting feature. Although admittedly, the wins were kind of taken out of the sales on that one as a week later, Pika released their video in-painting model. But what kind of brings us full circle on that is that Pika is about to get name checked as yes, is Sora as well. But Adobe has clearly not been napping on the job since last year's Max, uh, considering there is a ton of stuff baked into this update for Premiere. First off, of course, is their video in-painting model, which will be powered by Adobe Firefly Video. We can see here that we can select a region with a pen tool, generate a video asset up via Adobe Firefly, and then we're presented with three options to look for, much as we are in Photoshop. What's impressive, of course, is that this isn't just a still image that's baked into the video, but you know you can see it is clearly tracking along with the camera movement. We've got some really impressive rotoscoping features coming up via object detection. The removal does look pretty good. There is some smudging there, uh, particularly at the bottom there, where you can see that the, the, the horizontal line of the brick doesn't carry completely across. But like I said, when they showcase this at Adobe Max, um, I think this is one of those things where if you as an audience member don't know that something was removed there, you wouldn't really pick up on it. It is, of course, going to work a lot better when you're dealing with something like removing a poster from a white wall, as we see here, uh, trolling this diamond smuggler and not letting him know where the cafeteria is. That'll show him. Another quick shot here showcasing Adobe Firefly, changing this watch out to a different face. Uh, very, very impressive. Sort of an updated version of the tie example. Um, hey, he's wearing a blue business suit. Adobe, did you do that for me? Thank you. Plus, we have another new feature allowing you to extend out the length of your video clip. Uh, previously, the only way that you would be able to do this would be to slow your footage down, but now we can actually generate up our missing frames. But taking a really close look at this, it appears to me at least that this is probably doing something along the lines of the old trick where we take the last frame of a video generation and then use that as an extension. Um, although this seems to have a lot more stability and clarity than when we would try that in say like Pika or Gen 2. It also doesn't appear to be prompted. So my guess is that at least initially, we'll probably be seeing a lot of those kind of like dolly ins and zoom outs uh, that are sort of typical of AI video generation. But I am really impressed when you scrub back and forth between the original footage and the AI extension, like there's not a lot of change there. But here is where things get super interesting because we can apparently use third-party models within this as well. Showcased first is the ability to extend your video clips via Pika. And that's a massive time saver because you know previous to this, you would have to screenshot your final frame, take it over to Pika, you know, generate it as an image reference, download it from there, and then re-import it back into Premiere. Now, given that Pika currently generates about four second clips, uh, I don't expect it to go longer than that. And I'm really curious about two things, namely the ability to re-roll within Premiere, uh, because anyone who has used Pika, Gen 2, Hyper, any one of them knows that it often takes a number of generations to get a result that you're really happy with. The other thing that I'm really curious about is will we have access to all of the camera controls that we currently do in Pika? Now for the big jaw dropper of the video, uh, Adobe then showcases how Sora will be integrated in. Once again, we head over to the generate tool and then uh, this is what's interesting is that actually you end up dragging out the length of the clip on the timeline uh, and then obviously a pull down and open AI will appear. Uh, from there, you actually end up writing in a text prompt of what you want to see. From there, you get three potential starting frames for a Sora generation. The Sora output is of course super impressive, but I do think it's important to note that, you know, while we see Sora being utilized in Premiere, they're not actually saying that Sora will ship with this update of Adobe Premiere. That, of course, is entirely dependent on when OpenAI decides to release Sora. What is promising is that Adobe did go out of its way to showcase Sora here, which to me indicates that they're probably further along than just like a friendly chat with one another. 
Something else to note about Sora is that we did see it utilized for B-roll. We did not see it used as a clip extension. Adobe then rounds out with another B-roll example for Runways Gen 2, meaning that we will have access to two of the major players in the AI video space. Again, no indication if we will have access to, say, all of the motion brush tools available within Gen 2. To be honest, that might be a pretty big ask, and I'm, I'm sort of wondering if it might work a little bit more like Adobe's Dynamic Link, where you can generate your initial B-roll and clip extensions for timing within Premiere, and then head over to like Gen 2, do all of your motion brush stuff there, and then that clip will automatically relink back over to Premiere. Not saying that that will happen, just kind of musing aloud on how it might work. Overall, this is a hugely exciting development for AI video. Adobe has clearly come out swinging pretty hard here. I'm still at NAB for a few more days, and this place is like swarming with Adobe people, so I'll see if I can corner one of them and get some more information for us. I thank you so much for watching. My name is Tim.